Hello and welcome to Game Club, and today we'll be reviewing Small World from Days of Wonder Games. So let's open the box, and inside we have our instruction booklet, our game turn guide, that's for each player individually, and it's very well put together. Um, it allows for it to be outlined in such a way that it's easy for reference, or what you would say instant reference, but also complex enough that it gives the answers that you need. You have two balls. The first one is, has, as it says at the top here, two players. If I open that out, as you can see, it's pretty well sized for a two player game. And on our play, it takes around about 40 minutes to play. You have a three player board, and we'll just one of three there. That once again around about 40 45 minutes it took us to play this. Then a four player board, which took almost an hour for us to play. Um, to be fair, we did play it quite quickly, but it's obviously bigger. And then, of course, we have comprehensive five player that is pretty immense, great full world there. I'll just flip over so you can see the full player again. As you can see, it's once again pretty comprehensive there as well. Now I've gone and unpacked this, but basically what you get is you get your tokens for characters and special abilities here. You get your coins, and they're denoted as one, three, five, and ten. You have your forts which if you look at the map itself it will tell you where to put these you have your glaciers and then you also have your encampments the crown is for first player a dice which is specific to the game and then this wonderful little box and anyone who has a fetish for this like me will love the fact that you can keep all of them together and in order so you don't have to worry about it ending up in a box and sort of fragmented everywhere So what I'll do is I'll show you a single round of for one player just so you can see how it works but what effectively happens here is a player will choose, the first player and then subsequent players will choose from this race and special attributes uh, selection. If they decide to choose the top one that's free so they won't have to uh, take any, uh, sorry pay any coins for that or victory points as it says. Um, but if you go low down, then for everyone above that, you have to pay one victory point to take. Now, obviously, with this situation, it's a case of you get particular um, qualities which may benefit you in particular. For instance, here, you've got humans and you've got hills. So any of the hills, you get an additional victory point for at the end of every round. And obviously, humans get one additional point if they're on the board. Uh, Tritons, for instance, they have one less to go on the board when it comes to water spaces, which I'll explain in just a second. And obviously they, they've got this flying so they can go anywhere on the board if they wish to as well, which is quite useful. Um, but probably best I show you how it works by going through this. So what happens is that, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and choose Ratman because that just makes more sense just because it's the most simplest. So I'm not taking any from here, so I'm not going to put any victory points. I'll just move these all up one. So that's gone up one, up one, up one, and up one. And then what you can do is you can actually choose this one, just so you know you can choose this one, but obviously it means that you end up paying five tokens and at the very start will basically bankrupt you. But um, I just placed that there as well. And then with the Ratman, what we would do is effectively look at the Ratman, we can take, this is the pack with all the races in there, and the Ratman are, I think, this one here, are they? Yep, yep, so these are the Ratman here. And what you first off do, I'm just gonna put this back over there so that's out of the way, and what we effectively do is we then count, we've got eight and five here, which is 13, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, so I'm maxed out there now. And then effectively what happens is that I look at the board and I can decide any of the uh, bordering. So 
coat on any of the Bourbon token slots as such. So here, 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 and here, here. And not water ones, just to note, not the water ones, because that you will need special attributes for. I can basically place tokens on any of those that aren't water. So for instance, I could effectively go and put all my tokens on here if I wanted to. But that would make sense because what you're trying to do is take your well, monopolize as much as possible. So you probably would do three here and then three there as well. Now if you want to fight, so effectively take this lost tribe space, you'll need one plus one in order to defeat the lost tribe. And the lost tribe will then be removed from the board and effectively you would own that. Now you can keep going so you can take this space as well if you wish. Um, but obviously you've got to think about overextending and concerns about you know if you want to move particularly forward in the game you need to make sure you're not overly extended but this is just to show as an example and as you can see what I've done is I've started down here and I've worked my way up across the board to take quite a substantial amount of it now at the end of a round I will effectively get um, a victory point for each of these so it's quite beneficial to expand this much as you can but then it's obviously down to certain particular things now the underground symbol which is the second one here which we can just see here the special ability and luckily you have got this brilliant reference card which I, I can't say um, too much in the way of praise about so, uh, uh, sorry I can't I can't restrict my praise for it because I think it's absolutely wonderful it's very rare that you get such a useful and also such a clear and consistent guide but as you can see it says underworld conquer any cavern region and one less token than usual a minimum of one token is still required all regions with a cavern are considered adjacent so for instance what that is is these are cavern symbols here and you can probably make them out so this one here is a cavern symbol so you can use it for one less whereas so for instance if you wanted to you'd have to do one there but say for instance here we've got a mountain which you would need Three for you need two plus one additional one for the mountain. It would actually only be two for, so that would be beneficial for you if you had that as well. And these things are something you have to keep an eye on because they can benefit you greatly going forward. They can also be a hindrance if, for instance, they are something like the Dragon Master here, which would be a case of that dragon goes onto a particular um, square, a particular domain here. And effectively what happens is that would then block anyone else from getting on there which is useful for you but obviously not for other people uh, the other thing to note as well before we uh, round this up is that you've got in this game um, a very interesting idea of the battles at the end of the game so that at the end of the game you'll come you'll basically come to a final push in order to claim as much territory as you can uh, that is also a part of something which is known as the declining of the races which would be if you flip it over here then the race is in decline and that's useful in order to be able to select a new race from the side here but realistically because we're looking more at this as a conversation about basically playing the game and my review of the game I'm not going to go into too much detail on those what I will say however is that um, I think that the dice What's you, which is used for final battles uh, is very good. Um, I think it's quite simplistic and it allows for very fluid play, something that is sometimes quite rare in these sort of things. So, Small World. Um, I've only gone into the very brief mechanics at the start of the game because I wanted to just show how simplistic and easy they are and I think that that's a benefit for the game and something that is uh, what I would consider to be why it's very good for entry level players and people who are mid level players, people who want a game that functions quite smoothly, plays quite well, but isn't too assertive on mechanics and also assertive on time consuming for each round. It's There are some issues, um, it is a game that can be laborious because it will basically often, if you play it say four, five, six times, you will find that you'll end up using the same races and you'll end up invariably with the same special abilities cropping up again and again because some of them are key to what you want to do and others are less so. Um, it's a bit clumsy as well with the idea of declining because I think that in some respects that has been brought in because they wanted to be 
slightly more sophisticated because the concern was probably that players would get bored with the, uh, especially with the kind of risk element which is basically expansion. There's no then contraction for that and there's no ability to be able to flood or, or be able to flip that market as such. I'm not sure why I said flood, I think what I was trying to say was that the, the flooding in at the start can end up being that you overextend yourself and then get caught out. Um, it's not as much of a militaristic game as it's made out to be. It's far more about resource management in the sense of your token management and then your special attribute management. But overall, I'd say that this is a great game for probably four people. I don't think any more than that. I think when you get to five, it can be a little bit clumsy and cluttered and also take a bit too long. Um, and also, it's the sort of game that four players can really get down to. The board for four players is very good. Three players is okay, I think it's a bit small, and two players is just fine as well. Um, and I think that the components themselves, although they're, they're varied, are very well constructed within a very well constructed box. So for me, it's a game that will stay on the shelf. It will probably be one that I'll play a couple of times more. I don't know what will happen after that. But I would say that if you haven't got a small world, certainly consider investing in it.